Welcome back to another episode of Sound Pals Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review, and today I'll be reviewing the movie Deliverance from 1972. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. Intent on seeing the Kahulawasi River before it's dammed and turned into a lake, outdoor fanatic Louis Medlock takes his friends on a canoeing trip they'll never forget into the dangerous American backcountry. So let's begin with my first pro. This film, if you actually listen since the beginning, it's about the environment and how man thinks it can conquer it. They're damming a river to make it into a lake. But these four men go into nature trying to prove something, each one with his own purpose. Lewis is a frontiersman who knows how to survive but is looking for a challenge. Ed wants to prove to himself he is like Lewis or regain some power over his daily life. Bobby is the regular city person or can be a representative of humans in general. But Drew, he is the voice of reason or the human consciousness. But many will just remember two things, the dueling banjos and the squealing like a pig scene. But just like those viewers, we end up like Ed and Bobby completely changed at the end of the film. We are no longer what we used to be at the beginning and now we have to live with what we saw. Next pro. This film is based on a novel by the same name. I personally have not read it but I know of it so I can't speak and compare it to the film but what I can say is that during the filming there was issues between the director and the writer and also the cast suffered injuries and there are behind the scenes stories that you wouldn't believe. One of them is how the writer punched the director in the mouth and knocked four teeth out or how the cast did their own stunts and some of them got injured by doing so and they were not insured to keep the budget low or how they got sued for the song Dueling Banjos by the artist who claimed he had written it before and sounded similar to his song and actually won in court. I would recommend that after seeing this film you seek out articles or a podcast speaking of behind the scenes stuff. It would be very interesting if you like this movie. Next pro. The cast is rather small but it works. Four guys, Ed, Lewis, Bobby and Drew played by John Voight, Burt Reynolds, Ned Beatty and Ronnie Cox. Also you have the handful of people in the beginning of the film then the two guys in the woods and some extras at the end but that's it i enjoyed seeing how these men started in the beginning especially ed and bobby and by the end of the film were completely changed forever in every single way especially the part where bobby tells ed at the end that he won't be seeing him for quite a while as they said goodbye this shows that their friendship got fractured and is not what it used to be and it was all due to that trip down the river but if you include the man destroying nature message it all fits the town will be soon underwater due to the death that humans are making. It's as if they're just burying everything and forgetting that nature was there first. All this was done with the story of four men going down a river. Well, I might be looking too much into this, but it's about four guys who lives change and there is a dam being built, so you get what you want from it. Next pro, or a side note, it's due to this film and Burt Reynolds along with then Governor Jimmy Carter, they co-founded the Georgia Film Commission and this can be traced to many movies going to Georgia and film because of their tax incentive. And also because there are many places to film there that are beautiful and also you can change them to look like anywhere in the world. So next time you watch a film or a series, stay till the end of the credits. And if you see a giant peach logo, that means it was filmed in Georgia. And that means it was thanks to this film. And now on to my cons. Many people, once they saw this film, come out thinking three things. One, damn, white water rafting looks extreme. Let's go. Or two, never going camping again because there might be hillbillies in the mountains who want to rape me. Then there are the ones who got the message and said, hey, this is about man versus nature and how many want to bend nature to its will but sometimes nature hits back hard but either way this film will make an impact on you but i will say the con here is that james dickey the writer of the novel never wanted people to remember the squinting like a pig scene versus the actual message that he intended to be in the novel but it is what it is next con there are some parts of the film that are shot during the day but they want to be passed as being night and thus they resorted to tinting the film in post-production so many parts look like someone placed a blue plastic wrap over the lens and it really got me upset. I know that maybe there was no other option and they had to do this, but it really looks bad. Before you tell me that the director also did this to the rest of the film by degrading the colors because some of the scenery was too pretty, I already know that. But I'm talking about when Ed climbs the cliff, that scene just hurts me to watch. And I don't know, I think it's the lack of technique they used. Next con, the bad rap that the film left on Raboon County. At first, it brought a bunch of tourism and with that a lot of money but but then you have the bad rep such as everyone in the county are inbreds hillbillies that are just raping people in the mountains and don't forget about the bumper stickers the paddle faster i hear banjo ones or the ones that say he got a real pretty mouth ain't he or the line squeal like a pig so i guess if you want tourism you have to take the good and the bad i guess that's what happened to that county after this movie so my grade for this film is going to be a seven and a half out of ten so this film is one that will 
go over some people's heads and they will just recall the dueling banjos and the squeal like a pig scene. But for others who can see past that and see how the characters are trying to conquer the river or nature itself, they will get something out of it and the true message. And then the film opens up more things to talk about amongst friends and compare each character and see what they represent. I'm not going to say anything more, but I think Lewis said it best when he said, sometimes you have to lose yourself before you can find anything. So that does it for this review of Deliverance from 1972. Please join us next time where we're going to review Patch Adams. That's why you treat a disease, you win, you lose. You treat a person, I guarantee you, you win no matter what the outcome. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.